Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm Cooper, the developer evangelist at Hedera, and I'm here today to talk to you about how to pitch your Hedera 21 project. Uh, we're going to go through a little walkthrough of what it actually looks like to submit your project to the platform, uh, talk about what does or, or doesn't make a good pitch necessarily, uh, a little bit about like the structure of your demo and your submission, uh, and definitely going to save a good amount of time for, for question and answer at the end. Um, so if you have any questions throughout this presentation or the demo, uh, please use the chat or the Q&A form on Zoom. Uh, we will be sure to answer those questions as we go. We will also make sure that you have the recording of this live stream available so that you can watch it after or share with your teammates who weren't able to join the call. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually just walk through submitting an example project uh, on DevPost. I think, you know, actually going through what the form is or what the submission looks like is probably the most helpful for people uh, to understand, you know, what types of content do I need? Uh, what level of detail are people looking for? How long is this gonna take me? Uh, I think that just walking through and seeing, you know, getting a sense of the questions that are going to be asked and, uh, you know, just gauging how long it will take you to come up with those responses is probably one of the most helpful things that you can do. Uh, there still are two weeks available in the hackathon. Um, so starting to think about these things is, you know, it's a, it's a good time to start thinking about them. Um, so I'm going to exit this and go over to dev post here. Um, you can see that there are 550 participants so far, but we actually haven't uploaded. Uh, I don't believe we've uploaded anything to the project gallery yet. So you will not see other teams project submissions until we as the kind of administrators of the hackathon uh, go in and move them from a submitted project into the public project gallery. Uh, so you will not see projects in there. Uh, at least not at the moment, and probably not until we get closer to the submission date. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably just start from scratch here and create a new project. And you can see that there are zero of five steps. You have 10 more days until the deadline. And you can see that there are no other people on my team. Uh, the project creator, so whoever actually goes in and clicks, you know, create a project, uh, will be the one that has to go in and actually add new members to their team. Um, if, you, uh, if you're working alone, feel free to skip this step. But if you aren't working alone, uh, please, please be sure to add all of your team, team members uh, to your project. That way we can be sure that no one's, you know, working on multiple teams and it'll make uh, the actual you know, invitation to closing ceremonies and prize distribution so, so much easier for us. Uh, so please make sure that everyone who's working on your team uh, has been onboarded to DevPost and actually invited. Um, so I can skip this step because in this hypothetical scenario, I'm working by myself. Um, and I'll probably just fill this out with like very, very generic details for now. I think the main, the main thing for teams to understand here is just kind of the scope or the context of what the project submissions are going to require. Um, so I'll name this like a Dare 21 sample project, um, showing how easy it is to submit with DevPost. That is about as generic as it gets. Um, you know, this would probably be maybe two to three sentences at most. You can see that they character limit you to about 200, it looks like. Um, so you don't want this to be super, super long and detailed. You want it to kind of get people excited about what you're doing and want to keep learning more. Uh, as you can see that they'll give you a little post preview here and it'll show up in the description with your title and, and the, the elevator pitch. So if people share this on social media or share this on different platforms, uh, you want to make sure that this title and this thumbnail and this submission all sound, you know, look good or digestible in like a small format. 
I don't have a graphic or a logo or anything for my example project, but this is kind of enough for me. It looks kind of cool. They have like the Octocat and stuff. So I'm fine with this. Um, but you should have your own custom thumbnail for this project. Ideally, this is a logo or something that sets, you know, the context for what you're doing. If you're doing something with micropayments, maybe it showcases like people exchanging value. Um, it shouldn't just be like a screenshot of your web app. Uh, or, you know, like a, a generic image of your app. Uh, ideally, this is kind of like branded or on theme with, with your project. So I'll save this and continue. Uh, I assume no one has questions yet, but if you do, uh, please put them in the chat box. Okay, so the project details are really the main kind of meat of your submission. Um, yeah, this is a good, good comment from Matt here. Um, probably put three to four hours into the project uh, submission process. I think that that is a reasonable expectation um, for how long it might take to do these things. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the actual video submission and demo. Um, some people take longer to make content like that, like video demos. So it might take you a little bit longer than three to four hours. Um, but that's a good, good range. Um, so you can see that this project story portion is, uh, gives you categories that you can fill out and you should fill out uh, for your project. So specifically like your inspiration, um, you know, I'm not going to actually go in and write all these things, but I would expect that they should be, um, you know, somewhere between three to five sentences for each of them. You don't want huge, huge paragraphs of text for these things. Um, as you can imagine, our judges are going to have to go in and read every single one of these. And so if they have a very, very long wall of text uh, that might be redundant or not as concise as some of the others, uh, they're going to probably get fatigued maybe 30 projects in um, and after, you know, 30 projects, it's just going to be pretty hard to read a whole, a whole wall of text. Um, so three to five sentences, I think are, you know, good for each of these. It can be shorter or longer, depending on your ability to be concise and hit on, you know, the really important things. Um, but inspiration, um, I'll probably just add in like one sentence and like, the idea. Yeah, so provide context about why you're excited about the idea. Why are you building this out of everything else that could exist? You know, what, what made this specific thing important to you? Um, what it does is, is probably very specific. It's probably like uh, our web platform allows rainforest to be tracked and we use HTS to incentivize maintenance of different wildlife areas. You know, you would probably want to add one or two more sentences about how you actually use H2S, HTS to incentivize different types of maintenance, but this is, yeah, just an example. Um, how we built it, talking very specifically about uh, the different technologies that we used and or how it came together. Um, you know, something like we started by building a website with Django and Python, then integrated Hedera with a custom serverless REST API. That is a shout out to Matt because he built a custom serverless REST API, I believe. And so this is just setting like the context, like, okay, how did you put these pieces together? Um, what, what did different people on your team do? Uh, talking about, you know, any specific unique processes that you had for putting this application together um, is a good, good thing to put into that section. Um, challenges that we ran into, this can be anything from like, you know, we just didn't know Golang or we didn't have any experience with client-side JavaScript, or specifically if you, you know, ran into issues with our SDKs, you could log 
an issue within our SDK and link back to it here and say, hey, this wasn't as fully featured as we wanted, or we were trying to do X, Y, Z, and we just weren't able to. Um, I see we have some comments in the chat, so I'm going to kind of finish this section and then we'll hop back over, over to the comments. Um, so I would say, like, we had no prior experience with cryptography and had to learn how public private keys work. Uh, there were a few issues with the JS SDK. And then you could like link to those issue numbers if you really wanted to show them that you had actual challenges that you ran into and overcame. Like those are good, good potential options for linking to external resources. Um, accomplishments we're proud of having a live fully working website. Um, you know, just anything that you are happy to have gotten out of this hackathon, even if it's, you know, something as trivial as creating your first cryptocurrency, um, that is still very, very much an accomplishment that you should be proud of. Um, and you should, you know, put it in there and the judges will be happy to hear that you feel like you got something out of the event. Um, what we learned, hopefully that you learned how easy it is to build on the Hedera token service. Um, but I would definitely leave this as, as a good opportunity to talk about, you know, different um, technologies or frameworks that you started integrating, uh, different cryptographic techniques, whether it's transaction signing or verification, um, you know, any, anything that you learned, I would, I would feel free to write a good amount of context in there. And then what's next for your uh, Hedera 21 project? Uh, this should probably be a roadmap or kind of the teasings of a roadmap. Uh, so something like apply to the Hedera Boost startup program and continue development, hopefully launch in production in Q3. Um, you know, something like that, like a very clear, this is what my next plans are. This is what I would like to do. Um, if you're just gonna put this out as open source software and hope people maintain it or use it, like you can very much say that, like you don't have to have this kind of full featured roadmap, uh, but it is probably good to provide some context there for, for what you would like to do next. Um, so this is pretty easy, just built with, um, so JavaScript, Go, if you integrated Go to Dara, um, I don't know if anyone uses like IPFS, but you basically just list every single uh, technology that you used uh, within your project. Um, I would say that it's probably better to add more things to this rather than less things. Um, even if you're only using uh, an API for like one specific thing, or if you're just using Kabuto or a mirror node API for one specific thing, uh, the judges would probably prefer to see more items here than less. Uh, because some of them, you know, especially Google Cloud, for instance, uh, is really looking for specific technologies. For try it out links, this is ideally a URL link to uh, a website or an app store listing somewhere that judges can actually go in and play around with your application in a live environment. That is like the kind of top tier, you know, that's that's like the ideal because then they can make sure that it actually works the way that it's supposed to. But if you don't have a demo site live or an app store listing live, that is totally, totally okay. Uh, you can link here to your GitHub repository, to your code base, to example screenshots, uh, any type of, of resource that would be helpful for judging your project, I would just add in as another link here. Um, and if you have three or five of them, that is totally okay. Um, you just want to be sure uh, that you give them something that they can go in and verify that you actually wrote the code and actually have something working uh, and that it actually uses Hedera. Um, you, you do have to add a link to the GitHub code base. Um, ideally, that's a, a public GitHub link. Um, but we do need to be able to go in and 
verify that you actually implemented the Hedera token service in some way. Uh, you know, people could fake those things or uh, take a project from another blockchain and try to like move that over to Hedera and pitch it like it's something on Hedera. Uh, so we will want to be able to go in and actually look at your code. The image gallery here, I'm, I'm happy to answer more questions about uh, links or anything like that too. Uh, the image gallery is good for like example screenshots or slides that you might have that kind of justify your business uh, model or your kind of approach to the market. Uh, I would, you know, if you have high quality files here, uh, I would definitely upload them. Uh, it's probably better to, to have more types of this, uh, of this type of content than less. Um, especially after judges have been looking for, you know, 30 projects, having some really nice, easy to understand images are super, super helpful. Um, this could even just be images that are straight from your presentation deck. If you have a slide deck that you use in your demo video or anywhere else, uh, you could just upload your slides directly here. And the most important part of your project submission is probably this demo video. Um, I, I would say, you know, if I was a judge, which I'm not, the first thing that I would do for each project is watch the demo video uh, before going and reading anything else. I would be like, what are they trying to tell me in their own words? Um, and what, do, what does this actually look like or, or run as? Um, so you can upload this to YouTube, to Facebook, Vimeo, or I don't know what this Yuku is, um, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this video and, and how you should probably structure that uh, in a little bit. I'm gonna just try to add a fake URL here and see if they get mad at me. Um, but hopefully this is uh, helpful context. Oh, did it not? I didn't like my fake YouTube URL. I'll have to, to grab an actual one. That's a tiny desk concert. We'll see if they, they get mad at me for, for that. Hopefully I don't get any takedown notices for stealing NPR's work. Um, awesome, so this is probably like one of the last uh, things that you have to do with your project. So if you want to upload uh, the code base or the presentation deck or any of those types of media that you have, uh, you can actually just upload it directly. So if you don't want to share a GitHub link or if you don't know how to use GitHub, uh, you can actually upload your file here. Um, you can also let us know if you have any issues uploading files or demos and we can coordinate like a Google Drive share or a GitLab link or a private GitHub repository. Uh, we'll try to be as accommodating as possible. But we also need to kind of make a balance there between making it easier for you to submit your projects and also easy for our judges. Uh, so if you have any issues or questions with those, like let us know and, and we'll try to uh, make it as easy as possible for submitting your code. And this is important too. So for the sponsors and the, the special prizes, all teams will automatically be added to the grand prize challenge because all of the projects require you to use the Hedera token service and make new accounts. But for these, you should check off every single one that you think you qualify for. So financial services from Google Cloud, the browser extension from FFOS, and maybe the social good challenge from the Chopra Foundation. And you know, if I'm thinking like, okay, I know that I built a browser extension that uses Google Cloud and it's trying to help the rainforest, it's a good social good project. This all makes sense. But maybe I'm also, uh, for example, tokenizing real world assets because I have some type of way to get parts of the rainforest into tokenization. Um, but I'm not sure if I qualify for DLA's challenge. Uh, you should probably just click it anyways. It's better to try to oversubmit to projects than miss out on the opportunity to be considered for them. So if you're like on the fence about, do I qualify for DLA's challenge? Um, my general suggestion is to just click it and let the judges decide but you can feel free to reach out to us and we'll let you know which ones we think you should submit to uh, versus not. So I'll save and, uh, save and continue. Um, 
final reminder, don't forget to link to your code as well as your pitch video. That was within the project details. Um, again, if you don't want to share a public GitHub link, not the end of the world, we'll try to work something out uh, and get that figured out. Um, awesome. So terms and conditions, submit project. And you can see the tiny desk that I uploaded here and all of my project details. Awesome, and then you can leave comments and feedback and stuff like this. Uh, and like I said before, um, this project won't be available on the project gallery until me and other members of the Hedera team go in and kind of enable it uh, and let people view it. But at the time of judging, all the projects will be publicly visible. Everyone will be able to see your submissions uh, just to be totally clear there. Awesome. So that is it for kind of this walkthrough here. I have a few more things that I would like to talk about, and I definitely want to save some time for Q&A at the end. So I will just uh, keep going. All right. So now that you know exactly how to walk through the website, you know exactly what types of content you're going to need, you know, kind of the, the structure, the formatting of the text submissions and the, the video submissions, uh, these are kind of my suggestions. So I would start thinking about your pitch early. And what I mean by early is like right now. If you aren't thinking about how this is actually going to be perceived uh, by the judges, uh, you should probably give that some thought. Uh, keep your slides and all your content as short and concise as possible. Um, this is a very, very technically complicated industry. These projects can do so many different things that it's really important for judges to, to understand like out of the 30 projects, I liked this one because of X, right? I like this one because of Y. And they really need kind of those digestible snippets of content to understand them. Um, have as high of quality video and audio as you possibly can. You know, you shouldn't go out and put, buy new recording equipment or anything like that, but you should just try to make sure that you're like well lit uh, that there's no, you know, very loud background noise, all those types of fun things. Um, if you're on a team with multiple people, uh, maybe just have one person that does the entire presentation. If you are a team with multiple people and some people are on the business side, some people are on the technical side, uh, maybe alternate in between each section. So have someone who does like sales or business development talk through the high level uh, and have someone who actually worked on the code base walk through the demo, um, just for example. You also probably want to practice your demo video multiple times. Uh, you want to make sure that it has all the functionality that you want to show to the judges within that short video. Um, one thing that you can do with this video is record you screen sharing through something like Zoom or QuickTime. And you could go in and overlay the audio after. So that way you're not trying to walk through the demo and do the audio at the same time. Uh, you'll find that a lot of tutorials and things do the video recording and then overlay audio on top of it. Uh, so I would practice that a couple times, maybe do one with the audio on top and one with audio at the same time and see which feels better for you. Um, the project submissions and, and the demo specifically has a five minute maximum time. Uh, judges don't have to watch more than five minutes. They have 30, 40 plus projects probably to view. So if you submit something that's seven or 12 minutes, um, it's probably unlikely that they will watch the entire video and they could miss out on you know, really important content that you have. Um, and this is probably the most important advice. Like it's a hackathon. You're supposed to have fun and be learning things. It doesn't have to be that serious all the time. Um, so you should plan on submitting your project, whatever you have, even if you don't finish um, and like finish in your mind, but I'm sure that you still learn valuable things and hopefully got a lot out of this event. So you should still plan on filling out that project submission form um, you, you might win. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know how many people are going to submit to different challenges. Um, and maybe a judge will just really like your project. Um, if there are features that you weren't able to add, maybe like more secure key management or different API integrations, uh, feel free to include that in your what's next portion 
or you can have a slide in your demo specifically about the project roadmap and show, you know, by Q2, Q3, uh, we would like to have these more robust compliance features, or by Q3, Q4, we'd like to have a more decentralized solution. Um, you know, find a balance there between, I managed to do a lot, but we also have some vision or ways that we can improve this application. And so this is my, this is, you don't have to take this one for one. I think that this is, you know, one of many options for, for an example for your five minute demo video. But if, if I had to, you know, make a suggestion that I think could be helpful to every team out there, it would look something like this. So have a 30 seconds, you know, just one slide that's like, this is my project. The, this is our brand. This is the name of it. Uh, the next slide would be, what is the problem that we're trying to solve? You know, are, are carbon emissions so bad that we need to offset them with incentives? Um, you know, slide three is the potential impact. If we were able to successfully offset our carbon emissions or something like that, you know, we would dramatically reduce the potentially bad effects of climate change and talking about how important that is. Um, slide four is, is, you know, somewhat optional, but it is nice to call out specifically which challenges you were trying to go for in the hackathon. So talking about your usage of GCP because it's a really scalable infrastructure or it's really easy to use. Um, talking about BitGo because you like their custodial options. Um, it's good to highlight those specifically so that way judges will more distinctly remember them when they're thinking back on this, the projects that they saw. And also for people that are just watching the demo videos but may not read the entirety of your dev post page, uh, it's good to have you know, a shout out to those as well. Um, so a product overview, these can be app screenshots or bullet points for the functionality that you actually support. Um, just talking, you know, how does this actually work? What does the user experience look like and all of those fun things. Um, after that, you actually do want to have some type of video recording of you walking through the application as if you were a user um, or, you know, running scripts, if it's a software as a service tool or a developer tool, um, anything that you can hear that, you know, best exemplifies the project that you were able to put together. Then after that, I would do some type of conclusion. Um, you could talk about your roadmap or what you're going to work on next or um, you know, anything that you, you think is a good takeaway for the judge to leave kind of like one key thing in their mind uh, at the end. And so, you know, this is totally flexible. I wouldn't take this one for one and just copy it to what you're doing. I would think, okay, what about this makes sense for me? Maybe you don't address which challenges and you spend more time on your product demo, or maybe you uh, don't have a conclusion and, you know, talk more about your product overview. Uh, this doesn't have to be a one-for-one -one template. Uh, it's just these are the things that you may or may not want to include uh, in those five minutes. Um, and we do have more practice pitch sessions. Um, I forgot to add all of the times that we have available there. Um, but let me uh, grab that link, which we can share with you in the chat. And you can also schedule one-on-one -on -one times uh, with the mentors directly on DevPost. Uh, thank you, uh, Lena, who is behind the scenes, uh, and drop the link to the Google spreadsheet in the chat. Uh, we'll open that very quickly as well. Um, and so this is the easiest way that you can schedule a pitch session with us. Just go into this spreadsheet here um, on February 5th. You know, we're in Pacific time add your name and email uh, to this. And then me or Lena will send you a calendar invite where you can actually walk through uh, the entirety of your pitch. Um, if you're earlier in the stage and you need actual feedback on like how to put it together, we're happy to do that too. Or if you wanna come in and say, hey, this is what I'm gonna submit. Do you have any thoughts on it? Um, it doesn't matter, you know, how close or far away you are. Uh, I would, you know, plan on trying to get some feedback or suggestions uh, through this process. But again, if you don't want to go through this, feel free to schedule one-on-one -on -one time with mentors uh, within DevPost. 
All right. And that is everything that I had about how to pitch your Hedera 21 project. Uh, hopefully this is helpful and has made it a little bit less uh, scary or intimidating to start thinking about your Hedera 21 project. Um, we can definitely do another session like this or any other types of content or preparation that, you know, the participants of this hackathon think will be helpful uh, for getting the best submissions possible. Um, but we will be sharing the recording of this webinar for anyone who wants it. We can also share the slides. Um, but yeah, that is all that I had today. And I will stick around and answer questions if there are any. All right, so we had a question here. Um, I'm hesitant to give too much information on my project publicly. What is the best way to still submit? Um, so that is a tricky question because the projects by default will be public. Um, so I think it's just up to you how much you feel comfortable actually including in that submission. Um, Unfortunately, there is not a good way to just share it with the judges, but not everyone else. Um, because as you could imagine, there could be like transparency issues where uh, the judges could choose a project that no one else can verify actually even worked. Not, not that they would ever do that, uh, but we would like to have it be as transparent and fair of a submission process as possible. Um, maybe we can follow up with uh some more suggestions for those that don't want to share either their code base or their business model uh or specific details publicly uh but it's probably safe to assume that that information is going to end up public anyways i'm sorry if that's not good news i'm glad that this was helpful please share the vi we will share the video uh later today so that you can circulate it with the rest of your team or anyone else who wasn't able to make this call just reading through the chat to see if we have any uh other questions here but thank you everyone for joining this morning uh happy wednesday Someone asked about using like the given headers uh, within the project details page. Those are where they ask you like, what did you learn? What did you accomplish? Um, I would try to leave those because that way they'll be consistent across all of the projects uh, that end up submit getting submitted. I'm glad it was helpful, Matt. All right, if there are no more questions, uh, we will probably end this webinar uh, for the morning. We'll definitely circulate the recording of this video, uh, but please let us know on Discord uh, or any of the other resources. If you have any questions, please sign up for a practice pitch session. We're more than happy to help you uh, regardless of what stage you're at, even if you don't really have anything together, uh, more, more than happy to, to point you in the right direction. So thank you everyone and I hope you have a nice day.